let's talk NEAT activity. So NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. Tongue twister. And it is the energy expended for everything that we do that is not sleeping, eating, or sports-like exercise. It ranges from the energy expended um, from walking to work, performing yard work, errands, and any daily fidgeting. So our jobs and careers tend to impact our levels of NEAT generally, um, greatly as well. So occupational NEAT is the activity thermogenesis resulting from our work. So nurses, uh, waiters or waitresses, construction workers, personal trainers, for example, are really anyone you know that's working in an occupation that requires you to be on your feet all day, moving about or engaging in any physical activity would have a lot, um, a higher level of NEAT than someone who is maybe sitting at a desk all day. So the difference in energy expenditure between active and sedentary jobs can run into a difference of hundreds and hundreds of calories um, in terms of their NEAT activity level. So there are certainly ways to increase NEAT even when you're working in a sedentary occupation. So you can do so by working in some NEAT activity throughout the workday or upping your leisure NEAT. So the difference is all about how you choose to spend your spare time but unfortunately, most of us don't try to do so, and it's common for us to completely overlook NEAT, which is the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So, going to the gym doesn't make up for the eight to 12 hours you spend sitting at your desk every day. So you may think that you don't have to take the stairs or leave your house to go pick up dinner rather than ordering it in because you've already spent that hour at the gym or did your cardio or did your weightlifting for the day. So you probably don't realize that the calories burned with the accumulation of all of those small activities would significantly outdo the calories you burned on the treadmill. So the truth is we do not move much these days compared to the generation of, you know, maybe our parents or our grandparents. We spend more and more time in environments that require prolonged sitting, especially in offices, we're in the car a lot, we're on the couch. We spend most of our days shifting from one seat to another. So our sedentary lifestyles are detrimental to our health. Sitting is really the new smoking. So obesity was a rare um, you know, case a century ago, but today nearly one third of the world's population is obese or overweight. So the workplace can be the biggest culprit because minor manual tasks that used to be routine in sedentary occupations now require no physical effort due to uh, computerization and mechanics. Uh, what were once considered sedentary jobs are now even more so we don't walk over to our colleagues to relay a message. We shoot them a text or an email. We don't have to manually punch holes anymore. There's just machines that do it for us. Um, we can get through an entire workday expending hardly any energy at all. So when you look at the advances in transportation, that's also brought out the lazy in all of us because walking has almost become obsolete. So why walk? when Uber can conveniently scoop you up and deliver you right to your destination and why go pick up your food and go to a restaurant when you could just call Uber Eats and they'll do everything for you these days. So that's really uh, the problem that we all face. And we live in the time, in a time where one click of a button and we can get anything at our fingertips. So you will struggle, struggle um, to really out-exercise a sedentary lifestyle, no matter how many times a week you make it to the gym, it will not make up for being seated for the remainder of your waking hours. So here's the, the problem that we run into because focusing solely on the energy you use while exercising is one of the biggest fat loss mistakes you can make. Exercise will never make up for the energy you could be using 
living an active lifestyle. You want to effectively burn fat. You need to move. So when you're making healthier choices, ensuring you're active throughout the day becomes that much more important. So you might be asking yourself, someone who works at a desk or sits a lot, you know, how can I increase my knee activity? So here's a few ways that you can increase your knee activity. So you can take the stairs, especially when you're only maybe two to three flights. Um, the stairs are an easy way for you to just get in more activity. Um, you can get a standing desk. If you have a job where maybe majority of the time you have to sit, then get a standing desk so you can do both. You can stand, you can sit. Um, so it gives you more option. You know, even just standing burns more than just sitting. You can break up your day with, you know, short walks or short trips. 10 minute strolls throughout the day go a long way, especially if you could only take a 10 minute break. You could walk on your lunch break, uh, especially if you have an hour. It doesn't take you an hour to eat. Um, you can start doing your own chores, do your lawn, the garden, laundry, um, you know, cleaning and, you know, heavy cleaning and dusting. And, you know, if you have an animal, if you have a dog, make the dog happy and take it for daily walks. Um, that's actually my favorite way to do it. Um, you could park further from the door. You can do your emails and your texts during a walk. You can even maybe watch a show you want to catch up on on your phone during a walk. I love doing that as well. Um, skip the drive through and get out of the car and go get it yourself. Uh, put a timer on your phone every hour to remind you to get up and move. Even if it's just for five, you know, steps or five push-ups or five jumping jacks, it's still movement. So a rule of thumb when trying to live an active and healthy lifestyle and to get out of the sedentary lifestyle, you always want to shoot for 10K steps per day, whether it's a day with or without a workout. 10,000 steps is your lucky number. And just to give you an idea, even if you incorporated a 30-minute walk per day, that will get you pretty in pretty good range for 10,000 steps. So I gave you a ton of reasons and um, a ton of suggestions on how to incorporate your neat activity. So now you can be more conscious about it because some of these things you may not have even known and you don't know what you don't know. So now that you know how important it is for your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, now you know you could be more aware of it when maybe you're sitting and maybe you could stand and do something instead.